future eruptions of California's Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. We have gas emissions and tree kill now, but what's likely to happen in the future? This is by USGS, Long Valley Caldera, and the Mono Inyo craters. And just south of that, we have the Ridgecrest earthquake swarm. The Mono Inyo craters chain form a long volcanic complex in eastern California that has had persistent earthquake activity ground uplift in recent decades. This article was written before the Ridgecrest earthquake swarms and the major earthquakes. Now volcanoes have been active in the area for millions of years and future eruptions are certain to occur. When the next eruption in the area does occur, it will most likely be small and from a site in the Mono Inyo chain. Now one of the mountains we're going to be looking at because it's active and has tree kill and gas emissions and the last eruption is about 700 years ago is Mammoth Mountain in the Mammoth Lake area. Now the three Inyo craters, part of the Mono Inyo craters volcanic chain is one of the pictures we have here, northward across the floor of the Long Valley Caldera, large volcanic depression in eastern California. During the past 1,000 years there have been at least 12 volcanic eruptions along the chain. In the past 1,000 years, 12 volcanic eruptions. So let's say one about every 100 years, including those that form the Inyo crater in South Denman Creek Dome. Now after four strong magnitude 6 earthquakes rocked the Long Valley area of Eastern California in May 1980, U.S. Geological Survey USGS scientists also detected evidence of renewed volcanic unrest in the region. They discovered that the central part of Long Valley Caldera, a broad depression formed in a cataclysmic volcanic eruption 760,000 years ago, was slowly rising because such ground deformation and earthquakes are common precursors of volcanic eruptions. Now, as we're saying, this, this is uh, not fear-mongering or from our imaginations and fantasies. This is exactly what has taken place, and this is written by the credible agency's geologists. Okay? Now, it's no wonder when and where the next volcanic eruption might occur in the Long Valley area. Geological processes generally proceed at a slow pace, and when viewed on the scale of a human lifetime, volcanic eruptions and destructive earthquakes happen rarely. Nevertheless, the long history of volcanic activity in the Long Valley area indicates that future eruptions will occur. Now, because ground deformation and earthquakes are common precursors to volcanic eruptions, the USGS has continued to closely monitor the unrest in this region, especially after the Ridgecrest earthquakes. They have the uh, USGS has its own COSO volcanic field monitoring, and you can see uh, live earthquake maps uh, recorded there. Now, the biggest one that they had today was a 3.6, about nine miles depth. Now, geologists studying the Long Valley Caldera found that following its creation in the violent eruption 760,000 years ago, clusters of smaller volcanic eruptions have occurred in the caldera at roughly 200,000 year intervals. About 100,000 years ago, the most recent of these eruptions formed the Mammoth Knolls, low hills just north of the town of Mammoth Lakes. Mammoth Mountain, We'll see that later on, more details on this, because there's gas emissions even now, and there was, uh, there's tree kill all around the area, and also it erupted 700 years ago, but Mammoth Mountain, young volcano, on the rim of Long Valley Caldera, which is a supervolcano, as we know, Mammoth Mountain is part of the supervolcano, was built by numerous eruptions between 220,000 and 50,000 years ago. Volcanoes in the Mono Inyo crater's volcanic chain which extends from just south of Mammoth Mountain to the north shore of Mono Lake, have erupted often over the past 40,000 years. During the last 5,000 years, an eruption was broken out somewhere along this chain every 250 to 700 years. Okay, so we keep that in mind. 
not just 100 years in the mono in your crater volcanic chain, every 100 years, 12 eruptions in the past 1,000 years, but every 250 to 700 years. The Inyo craters and nearby lava domes were formed by a series of small to moderate eruptions 550 to 600 years ago, and the most recent eruptions along the volcanic chain took place about 250,000 years ago at Paoha Island in Mono Lake. The pattern of volcanic activity over the past 5,000 years suggests that the next eruption in the Long Valley area will most likely happen somewhere along the Mono Inyo volcanic chain. However, the probability of such an eruption occurring in any given year is less than 1%. This is comparable to the annual chance of magnitude 8 earthquake, like the great 1906 San Francisco earthquake along San Andreas Fault in coastal California, or of an eruption from one of the more active Cascade Range volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest, such as Mount Rainier. As long as increased volcanic unrest, including earthquake swarms and ground deformation, and CO2 gas emissions continue in the Long Valley area, the chances of an eruption occurring in the near future will remain somewhat increased. But evidence from long, vo large volcanic areas and calderas worldwide show that unrest, such as the current activity in eastern California, can persist for decades or even centuries without leading to an eruption, Nevertheless, recent eruptions at Rabaul Caldera in Papua New Guinea, 1994, and Izu Volcanic Complex in Japan, 1989, followed short periods of unrest, emphasize the need to closely monitor restless calderas. And again, this was written before the Ridgecrest earthquake. When an eruption does break out in Long Valley area, its impact will depend on the location, size, and type of the eruption, as well as the wind direction. Also, an eruption during the winter months could melt heavy snowpacks, generating mud flows and locally destructive flooding. And most likely, the next eruption will be a small and similar to previous eruptions along the Mono Inyo volcanic chain during the past 5,000 years. Such eruptions typically begin with a series of steam blast explosions as rising molten rock, that is magma, encounters and vaporizes underground water near the Earth's surface. These blasts can throw large blocks of rock and smaller fragments hundreds of feet into the air, leaving deep circular pits like the Inyo craters. If magma reaches the surface, gases trapped within it can ex escape explosively, hurling volcanic ash, tiny fragments of the solidified magma, as high as six miles or more. Airborne volcanic ash can be carried hundreds of miles downwind, and the amount and size of falling ash decrease with distance from the eruption site. Thin accumulations of ash pose little threat to life or property, especially in the areas where the roofs of most buildings are constructed to withstand heavy snow loads. But even a light dusting of fine volcanic ash can close roads and seriously disrupt communications and utilities for weeks or months after an eruption. The eruptions that led to the creation of the 600-year-old South Deadman Creek Dome covered the area of what is now the town of Mammoth Lakes, with a layer of volcanic ash about one inch thick. During these eruptions, the wind first blew towards the northeast and later towards the southwest, spreading volcanic ash in the pattern on the map that we have concerning this. These eruptions also produce fiery flows of hot ash, which are pyroclastic flows. Depending on the wind direction and the location of an eruption site, future eruptions in the Long Valley caldera could spread volcanic ash over the communities of Mammoth Lakes, June Lake or Lee Vining, see the eruption chart, pyroclastic flows indicate by yellow and orange area. Now, Explosive volcanic eruptions may also produce fiery flows of hot ash, the pyroclastic flows sweeping over the ground at speeds of greater than 100 miles an hour, devastating everything in their paths. In the past 5,000 years, eruptions from several sites along the Mono Inu chain have produced narrow, tongue-like pyroclastic flows that extended more than 5 miles. 
Fortunately, the main population centers in the Long Valley area are far enough from probable eruption sites that they're unlikely to be directly impacted by future pyroclastic flows. Less violent eruptions have also taken place in the Long Valley caldera. These eruptions typically began with mild explosions that formed relatively small volcanic cones, less than a thousand feet in diameter, and then produced hot, fluid lava flows that extended a few miles. Eruptions of this type about 5,000 years ago created the red cones just south of Mammoth, Mammoth Mountain, Flows of fluid lava were also erupted from sites near the base of Mammoth Mountain between 400,000 and 60,000 years ago. Such flows are highly destructive to property, but seldom, in, uh, seldom endanger people because lava flows rarely, rarely flow faster than a brisk walk. Even though uh, in the last year's Kilauea, the lava flow was flowing at 18 miles an hour, fast like a, like a fast-flowing river almost. Now, although the chance of a volcanic eruption in any given year is small, future eruptions will occur in the Long Valley area because volcanic unrest can escalate to an eruption in a few weeks or less. USGS scientists are closely monitoring activity in this region. To be able to provide the public with reliable, reliable and timely warnings before an eruption, USGS joined local and state authorities developing procedures for responding to changing levels of volcanic unrest in Long Valley caldera area. Now, according to the uh, Wikipedia Mammoth Mountain, lava dome complex west of the town of Mammoth Lakes in the Inyo National Forest of, of Madera and Mono counties, it was formed in a series of eruptions that ended 57,000 years ago. Mammoth still produces hazardous volcanic gases. In geology, the mazuku, evil wind, is a pocket of carbon dioxide-rich air that can be lethal to any human or animal life inside. Mazuku are created when carbon dioxide accumulates in pockets low on the ground. As we know, CO2 is heavier than air, which causes it to flow downhill, hugging the ground. And this is why we saw, for example, in Yellowstone volcano recently, uh, Yellowstone, yes, super volcano, Yellowstone Park, the recent bison kill that they were uh, just um, uh, keeled over as they were walking because of the CO2. Now, geology, Mammoth Lake is a lava dome complex, southwest corner of Long Valley Super, uh, Caldera Supervolcano consisting of 12 rhyodacic and dacic overlapping domes. Those formed in a long series of eruptions from 110,000 to 57,000 years ago, building a volcano reaching 11, over 11,000 feet in elevation. During this time, massive dacite eruptions occurred roughly every 5,000 years. The volcano is still active with minor eruptions, the larger of which was a minor phreatic steam eruption 700 years ago, and is still having volcanic gas discharge outgassing of large amounts of carbon dioxide of the south flank near Horseshoe Lake, called Mazuku in that area. Concentration of carbon dioxide in the ground ranges from 20 to 90 percent CO2 measurements. And that's where we have tree kill. Most likely sources of the CO2 are degassing of intruding magma and gas released from limestone-rich metasedimentary rocks heated by magmatic intrusions. The magma interacts with limestone, breaks it down, creating CO2 gas. The remarkable uniformity chemical and isotopic composition of CO2 and accompanying gases at different locations at Mammoth Mountain indicates that there may actually be a large reservoir of gas deep beneath the, beneath the mountain from which gas escapes along faults to the surface. Measurements of helium emissions support the theory that the gas emitted in the air at Tree Kill area have the same source as those discharged from Mammoth Mountain fumarole. There is evidence that the rate of CO2 discharge has been declining, with emissions peaking in 1991. Last fall, the USGS came out with a list of volcanoes that were uh, volcano threat 
for the West Coast. Three of them were California volcanoes, were at the top of the Federal Volcano Threat List. And we know that uh, the UHGS list of 18 very high threat volcanoes remains the same as what the list had in 2005, including two volcanoes of Hawaii, Big Island, Kilauea, and Mauna Loa. Four are in Oregon, including Mount Hood, Crater Lake, and four in Washington, including Mount Rainer and St. Helens, which underwent a deadly eruption in 1980 and is the most active volcano in the Pacific Northwest. But something is happening in Mount Hood. I have to do a video on that. Now, volcanic activity in California. Uh, we have Mount Shasta is very high risk. Lassen Volcano Center is very high risk. Medicine Lake is high risk. Clear Valley Volcano Field, which is part of the Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano System, is high risk. Long Valley Caldera is very high risk. UBB craters, which are just north of the Casa Volcanic Field, are moderate risk and Casa Volcanic Field moderate risk. Salton Buttes, which is southeast of Los Angeles, is high risk. But now we have the Casa Volcanic Field earthquake swarm after the double Ridgecrest earthquakes. That was classified moderate and that is of course active. It's deforming, it's rising, and it has the earthquake swarm. Also, the earthquakes seem to be going either south towards Salton Buttes or north towards Long Valley, towards Mount Whitney, which is of course a volcano. This is a picture of the Ridgecrest area geothermal plant. As we know, it's one of the biggest in the country. It's in the uh, China Lake Naval Base area, and it, ha it produces enough energy for 270,000 families. And of course, it has a magma chamber underneath. That's why they have the geothermal plant there. I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.